Um, I'm Kai Tui. I'm a freelance journalist, and I just come um, to Maldor today, and I come from Rango. And I want to uh, share my experience to international community to understand the real sure. situation of uh, sure. Maldor and Bukita. So, uh, uh, can you introduce your name first, and then what you do in country? Okay. My name is Kai Tui, but I now I have found it four months ago. I found it in an uh, association called uh, YMDA, Youth Development Association Mondo. So currently now I'm a, the vice president of this organization and now I'm a, giving some kinds of assistance and aids to the refugees. So you're teaching or doing something? What, what I'm doing? also, I have been teaching uh, English here for nearly three, uh, two months uh, in Budhidown and in Mondo also. Uh -huh. I, have, I used to have 500 students. Oh, really? Before this conflict, uh -huh. now it has already uh, uh, destroyed because of this conflict. Yeah, yeah. You, you just postponed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just postponed the program. Oh. Now I'm helping the refugee here. Yeah. yeah. So you are not from here. You are not a local people, lo local person from from Maldon. Actually, I was born here, but I have been uh, in 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 Rangoon for 12 years, and I used to be a political prisoner, oh. and now I have been released. Only for so uh, okay. So when the conflict happened, like burning houses, and then it's a very risky situation happened in mm -hmm. Maldor. Sure. So at the time you were in Maldor, right? Yeah, exactly. So uh, can you tell tell me and uh, what happened and how did it start? It? Okay. So it was on Friday, uh, 8th of uh, June this month. So uh, actually, it, it started on the spur of the moment. Is that mostly most people didn't expect, you know, these kinds of uh, chaotic situations to happen in Mondo, but uh, it happened after the um, um, uh, Muslim Bengali gather in the the biggest mosque in Mondo in downtown area. Uh, their reason is that they would like to pray, uh, you know, for those people who are uh, recently killed in Tangu. So this is their reason, but. Actually, it comes out that it, it's not actually, it's not, it's a plot. And uh, as soon as they have finished their gathering on Friday, maybe around about at 1.30 or 2, they started to get out of from the mocks and they gather maybe uh, nearly 5,000 people on the road. Uh -huh. Okay, they're running and they, ha they started to, you know, throw the stones, okay, mm -hmm. to the uh, local Rokhaini's house and they started to burn from this quarter. This is the first quarter uh, uh, burned down by the you know, Muslim uh, Bengali people. So, um, as the, the local Rakhine mm -hmm. or Arkinese people piped back? Actually, the people, the Arkinese people were not ready on that day. They were shocked. Okay, they didn't know what to do, first of all. But they have to hold some, you know, just uh, some weapons like wooden sticks mm -hmm. and some uh, yeah, swords, these kinds of things they grab, but they, they, are, they were ready, you know, to protect their own family in front of their respective houses. That's mm -hmm. it. But actually they were not ready. They were shocked, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, how, how many population ratio in Maldo currently? Okay. Uh, but it's not an official record. Officially, uh, because officially, the, even the government didn't have you know, the exact population, mm -hmm. uh, actually the ratio is 95% is Muslim people here. And uh, only 5%, nearly 5% Muslim, Muslim, Muslim people here. And only 5%, uh, including, you know, some uh, government officials in here, maybe uh, 30,000 people, 30,000 people uh -huh. in Mondo. People. So, do you think all the Bengali people or some, some extremists like burning houses or killing people? Actually, this is extremist act, actually. This is not, you know, uh, this is not what innocent people are doing. But what they have done is, you know, completely wrong. And uh, on the other hand, they are fabricating some news that they are doing wrong, you know, that act, on the other hand. But they would like to cover what they have done is wrong, you know, mm -hmm. to like, uh, for example, uh, minority people, you know, this is very clear, obviously. Minority people are kind people in Mondo. I have already mentioned. Yeah, about yeah, 5%. About 5%. But majority, of, you know, they are majority. I mean, Bengali Muslim are majority here. Mm -hmm. So actually, this is a... Uh, I have already mentioned that it's not based on racial and religious matter. 
But if you see, you know, uh, uh, roughly, okay, but maybe it seems like religious and racial problem, but it's not because it's like invasion, you know. Uh, uh, what I believe is that what I heard from the Bang Bangladesh uh, news sources, uh, because some Rakhine people in Bangladesh keep me, you know, inform, keep keep uh, keep giving me some information, information from uh, since uh, 8 June. Mm -hmm. So what they are talking about is that this is a there is a connection between RSO, okay, mm -hmm. Rohingyas Solidarity Organizations, and the people who are the backseat drivers in Mondo, mostly they are rich people, mm -hmm. okay, like for example like Dr. Tuang, now he is just arrested by the authorities, now he is uh, being interrogated and he is in uh, custody. So these kinds of people are controlling, you know, these uh, mus Muslim society, you know, to start the fighting, you know, like uh, they would like to create a racial and religious problem. Actually they would like to invade this land because they have seen green grass and green water in Mondo. Because we have only minority people here, we have so many, you know, grain field here, mm -hmm. for them, you know, to live here. Actually, it started, uh, not just now, it has been starting from, you know, uh, 1942, mm -hmm. because we have many historical records for that. Yeah, and um, before I came here, and then uh, the conference started here, <coughs> and then I have read uh, a, lo a lot of uh, uh, documents, and then also articles from international uh, um, yeah, by English, especially. And they mentioned that um, the Arcanese are racist, extremists are burning uh, Bengali houses and then killing innocent Bengali people. <coughs> so, so what is your opinion on that? Okay, it's ridiculous. I would like to say is that it's ridiculous, it's nonsense. What, what is really happening is not like that. <coughs> Actually, Muslim Bengali are burning down the Arcanese houses and when they get away, when they got away from their houses because of the you know authority forces, because they, they did something wrong first. So later they they were afraid of you know authorities because there are some uh, special you know security forces came here on that day, so they fleed. So when they flee their houses, they started to burn down their houses too. And they fabricated the news, you know, from the UN using some UN internet servers because most of the you know uh, officials, higher rank officials in NGOs and international NGOs are Muslim Bangli there, so <coughs> they have more chance you know to use internet, internet and to uh, f to fabricate the news that you know uh -huh. uh, what they have. Actually, this is a fabrication. Yeah. Okay, and I would like to invite all the international community, if possible, come here and just look at what is really happening here. Mm. So the people are running currently, the Arcanese people are running and then they have no job right now, no uh, even <coughs> security guides and coming and uh, taking care of it. Yeah. And do you think is it okay and uh, okay for for them, you know, to live safe, safety for a long time? It's uh, impossible from my opinion you know, point of view. Because uh, the most important things right now for the resettlement now the government is trying to normalize the situation i would like to say this is by force because now the people are from the villages uh you know which were burned down by the muslim Bangli. now they are they, they are shocked currently you can see that in the refugee camps because there are so many you know young children some infants some old people there so they w are very shocked to go back and to resettle you know uh mm -hmm. you know in their you know native place native villages but now they don't want to go there, but they have they have to also, you know, to be afraid of the you know authority. I mean, command. Mm -hmm. You have to go. Okay, we will provide some food, some shelter. But it's not enough. What we have to think is that uh, guaranteed security. In other words, we have to say sustainable security. Okay. Now the people won't stay here. The people won't leave. I, what I believe is that if there is no guaranteed security. Uh, by you know by the government officials because this is very important if we would uh, we would like our people to live here for long run we need security forces to protect our people mm -hmm. from these kinds of dangerous and you know the anarchy things this yeah. is a kind of anarchy work 
So uh, the local people are moving to site three, and then Rangon also I've seen as home people on um, on the jetty. Yeah. And then and yeah, it's true. So how can we you know sustain them to stay here uh, in Mao to live as uh, without you know without afraid of the danger? And what will be um, your point of view? Okay. The f uh, uh, first of all, I would like to put it, what I would like to put is that security is number one. If we would like to move them to their original places, like villages, mm -hmm. and okay, it is quite easy, you know, to build their houses by from donated money from different donors mm -hmm. around Myanmar, around you know, the, around the world, and uh, and uh, by the government, it's quite easy to build the houses, you know, that they had they had lost. Okay, in 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 burning down in the blast, but uh, the most crucial thing is that security. Security is very important. If we have, we can't guarantee the security. They won't leave in these places. Mm -hmm. They will abandon the place, you know, the villages, and they will move away. Even though the government, you know, prevent prevent them not to get away from this Mongno area. So maybe five years later, just think about that. Okay, what will happen? There, there will not be any indigenous native here. Yeah, currently uh, the Bangli people might be from uh, other other country, you know, especially Western country, and they are uh, demonstrating and stop genocide in our country. And the Rohingyas stop uh, killing Rohingya genocide in our country. So, what do you think about it? Actually, you know, the Muslim people trying to kill you know, a lot of people like, because there, there is a very good example. For example, in 1994, what happened in, you know, Rwanda, okay? So actually, they are killing Arcanist people. Arcanist people are, you know, minority in Mondo. Mm -hmm. We have no weapons, no guns, okay? And even the swords that we have, it's not very sharp. It's blunt already, mm -hmm. because we use it only for, you know, cleaning fish or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's very laughable, you know, rid ridiculous. We are not killing these people. Yeah. So it's not like uh, Arkanese people bombing uh, uh, Bengali pe people's houses and then killing them and then fight back to each other. Not not like that currently. N not like that. Actually, we are protecting ourselves. Yeah, protecting okay. our family, mm -hmm. our young children, our young generation, our mother, our parents. Okay. We have to protect the pe these people. Actually, we are not fighting back. For you see that this is that this is the Arkanis house, uh -huh. burned down by the Bengali Muslim. It's a very good example. Okay. okay. So how, how how many villages were born? Okay, nearly 15 villages from the south of Mondo uh -huh. were completely burned down, and uh, some people were you know, injured and some people were killed on yeah. the spot. Yeah. So how can we stop this conflict as soon as possible? Uh, as soon as possible. Okay. The first thing is that now the rainy season. Yeah, the weather is now, you know, very uh, capricious in, in this situation. So, the refugee have difficulties to go, go back and to restart their new life, you know, without help from the government and international society. So, I would like to invite some international community to come and look, have a look at these people, okay? And please listen to what they would like to, you know, present mm -hmm. about their feeling. So this is the reality. So what we need is, I have already mentioned that many times, security is very important. If the government would like you know, these people to leave here, the security is very important.